The NOAA solution is agent-based. Uh, the agent sits on the user's desktop, collects information about the user's experience, sends it to a centralized NOAA server, and then that data is aggregated and presented to the end users through a set of dashboards, analysis tools, alerts, and the various workflows that we're going to show you today. Um, it is precisely because the agent is sitting on the user desktop is what drives all of the use cases that we're going to cover today and really differentiates NOAA from any other APM-like solution. So let's dive into some of the use cases and of how NOAA is used in the enterprise. The first use case we're going to talk about is user support. Um, and there's two primary ways how our solution is used in user support area. The first is the ability to be proactive. So for the first time, because we are monitoring all the users all the time across your entire enterprise, you're able to see in real time key KPIs about the user experience. So for example, here in the user support dashboard, you could see all of my users. I could see the average response. I could see the system errors. And more importantly, I could actually see all of the user errors for any user within my, within my environment. And note that these are not scripted or robot users. These are real production users that are using my application. So for example, here I have Howard Keel, and I'm able to very quickly identify where he's having some response issues. So for example, I see custom Z code, Z-I-A-T, and he's having a six minute wait time as he's trying to click on the execute button. I see a couple of transactions, MD61, MD62, where the user is having a lot of read errors. And then I see a lot of user-related errors, training problems. And again, a lot of these issues, if you're just strictly focused on the APM monitoring from the back end or from the server side, a lot of these would not even show up as errors. Another view of a similar use case is I'm going to go into error analysis. So here, for example, in the error analysis dashboard, I could see my top 10 error messages, anything from material issues, locking issues, authorization problems. I could see quickly how many users are being impacted and how many times that error is occurring. So for example, here I see authorization issues 70 times, 562 instances, and I could quickly identify who these users are and reach out to them in a proactive manner and be able to resolve this issue before the incident ever reached the support desk. And that's one of our key value drivers, the ability to reduce the number of incidents that end up in the support area. So here you can quickly see the users, the modules, the screens, the exact error messages that the users are getting and how many times that error is occurring. So here, for example, I see user, he's struggling in a transaction 11 times he's trying to execute a process and he keeps getting an authorization issue over and over again. Another use case that I want to talk about also in the user support area is the ability to reduce the time that it takes to help the users when they're calling the support desk. The goal is to be able to quickly ascertain as to what the problem is with the least amount of interrogation. And again, only because the NOAA agent is sitting on the user desktop and monitoring real interactions of the user with the application, could we quickly pull up a workflow for any user during any day that he has been using the application and see exactly what the problem is, everything leading to the error and what the user has done to, uh, to correct the error as well. So for example here, I just pulled up a user workflow for Howard Keel. You could see here that the Howard has been pretty busy with an SAP. He's logged in from um, midnight to 7 a.m. I could quickly see every transaction, every T code, every screen. Um, for any time, any time he's doing any type of navigation, I could see how long he's spending within each screen. Anytime he's getting any type of messages, uh, error messages, like here you see some rounding rule violations, all of that is being captured. So the support team now has all of this information in front of them, and they don't need to interrogate Howard. They don't need to ask him, what did you do? How did you do it? How, did you, how do you reproduce the problem? They have all of this information right in front of them. You can export this data. You can attach it to your remedy ticket. 
and then you could escalate this up the chain so for example if this ends up in a development area and requires a fix the first thing that that team is going to need is the ability to reproduce the problem so now there's no more concept of non-reproducible issues and again this use case again is only powered by the fact that we're monitoring real users all the time from the desktop another use case that i want to talk about it is change management uh, a lot of times during an, uh, a life cycle, you're going to be doing rollouts, upgrades, uh, patch releases, and the goal is to be able to get on top of that project, be, make sure that you are aware of how the, uh, the change is impacting your production users in real time, and be able to get the users and application into full sustainability mode as soon as possible. And again, here no is unique in that because we're monitoring all the users all the time, we now have some very specific baselines as to what the norms are in terms of the application response, in terms of application usage. So for example, here we're comparing two periods. We're looking at the first two weeks of April versus the last two weeks of April. And we have, and let's assume that, you know, April 15th was a change event, right? You're rolling out a new patch or a new version. And you want to see in real time how this is impacting the various components of your application. And again, because the NOAA agent is sitting on the desktop and we fully understand the application model, so we could tell you where within the application there are some negative um, uh, negative results from the release. So for example, here I see some specific transactions, actually custom Z transactions that are negatively, uh, that are negatively impacted by this release in terms of the response. You see here a drop in response, more than 50% degradation in how fast the application is performing. What's more importantly is that the same modules are actually being utilized much less, right? You see over a 35% drop in adoption. So as the application response degrades, so is the usage. And the big question is, if the users are not using this process, they're not using this transaction, what are they doing? Did they find a workaround or are they simply just not doing anything and it impacting your, uh, your business processes? In addition to just telling you that there is a response degradation for a specific transaction, we could actually be very specific. We could tell you where, which screen or which operation is actually causing the poor response time. So for your support team, your application support team that is monitoring the rollout, if they have this type of insight that pinpoints the response issue, they're able to resolve it much faster and be able to get on top of this immediately before impacting business. Um, the same applies to other user attributes like site or location. If you have visibility as to the scope of impact of the response issue, you're able to quickly allocate the proper resources and focus to just deal with that uh, specific uh, specific area. So for example, here you see two cities where the response time is over a minute wh while the other locations are, 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 are well within the accepted threshold. So um, one additional use case that I wanna talk briefly about is the, is the training area. Uh, and again, only because NOAA is monitoring on the desktop and is able to capture 100% of all the user errors as well as system errors, are we able to provide insight to the training teams as to what areas of the application the users need training in. So for the first time, the training teams could actually develop true targeted training programs based on the real usage of the end users. So very quickly, for example, you could see all of my top errors that the users are experiencing, and I could quickly get a breakdown as to the impact or the scope of those issues across my organization. So for example, let's pick invalid user input, clearly you know, a training uh, type of issue, and I could quickly see which departments, for example, are having a lot of those issues. So here I see two departments, STC and OTC, responsible for more than 70% of these errors. Not only that, but within each department, I could quickly see that there's only really three errors that are responsible for about 80 to 90% of those 
um, user errors. So the training team can now develop a very targeted training program, perhaps a lunch and learn, maybe a very quick and concise e-learning content and be able to address this issue and remove these errors from circulation and before they actually end up in the support team or before they consume a lot of the key user or super user time. And it, this is also where the user attributes that we talked about are extremely valuable. So not only can you see the breakdown based on a department, but any other user attribute, whether it's manager, position, site, um, allows you to further drill down and understand the scope of my training gap. So very quickly here, for example, when I look at my sites, I see that there are two sites, Chicago and Wilkes-Barre, which are responsible for 50% of my errors. So, you know, if I don't have a, a lot of training resources, I have very limited uh, training staff, I could go ahead and send somebody down to these locations. Maybe they spend a day or two doing some targeted training courses for these end users and have the biggest impact in terms of my overall organization. Thank you for joining today's webinar and participating in the demo. 